Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to replace the electronic limited slip motor for the rear differential in the Jeep. So let's talk about this. So I'm replacing the, the motor in the Jeep because um, going back to 2019. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about why I need to do this and if you if you don't want to listen to me just talk for a bit um, you can skip ahead I'm gonna add the uh, the chapter timestamps down below so you can skip ahead I was using a taser and it's a an OBD2 uh, device you, you plug it into the OBD2 port and it unlocks a bunch of cool things um, fun things um, but not really need to have stuff it enables you, uh, without a computer, um, it enables you to um, keep the fog lights on when you have the high beams on. Um, you can change what um, daytime running lights are. Um, you know, so in, instead of having the, the, the white LED C light, you can instead have the, the blinker as the daytime running. Um, there's other things that it can do. Um, I'll put a link to uh, to where you can go to, to find to learn more about it or maybe throw up a picture um, So it does cool things uh, one of the things that it that it allows you to do is uh, force rear-wheel drive in this and otherwise full-time four-wheel drive vehicle that you Can't take out a four-wheel drive, but that device allows you to force the transfer case to disconnect um, the power going to the front so you're going all full rear wheel drive and it does uh, some other cool stuff like line lock line lock so uh, if you're familiar with you know drag racing when um, when the cars line up and they gotta um, heat up the tires and it just cooks the rear tires well line lock it holds the front brakes but doesn't um, put any um, brake holding on the rear. So the brakes are, are inactive during the time that you're doing a line lock and you just roast the rear wheels. So that's cool. But why? Why do you need that? Well, I felt like I needed it and it was fun. Um, I didn't use a line lock all that much, but I did drive around with it in rear wheel drive and it really did make a big difference. But that's not what this Jeep is designed for. It's designed to be driving in full-time, four-wheel drive, where the power goes um, a little bit more slightly biased towards the rear, because that's just the nature of how transfer cases work. Um, and then, you know, the difference goes up to the front. So it's probably like uh, 52, maybe 55, 60 at best um, in the rear and then the rest goes up to the front. So now, with 100% of all that power and all that torque going to the rear differential, it basically smoked my rear diff. Started throwing all, you know, kinds of service four-wheel drive warning lights, and um, I ended up taking it to uh, the Jeep dealer so that they can plug it in. This was before I was really, like, super hands-on. Um, in doing DIY things, so took it to the dealer. Uh, they they scanned it and they were like, "Yeah, um, looking at the codes, it it looks like um, the diff is going to need to be replaced. It's probably the the clutch packs that's in the the differential um, started wearing really bad, and you know that's just among everything else." Um, so they gave me a quote on what it would be to replace the differential with labor and a brand new differential, they wanted $2,800. $2,800. I almost ate my hat. $2,800. I mean, I, I was I was pretty hand, handy at the time, but not like super, uh, super handy. This was before I started posting all those YouTube videos. And so I took it upon myself to figure out what would be involved I was in one of the, the Facebook groups and one of the guys in the group said, here, here's 
the service manual for the WK2. So cool, downloaded it and ended up getting my hands on that, figured out what process was involved to um, remove the differential. It didn't look too, too bad. Could probably get it done over a couple days uh, with a with help from my friend and just, you know, do it, do all the work in my garage. So I sourced a, a used one. It was lightly used, 700 bucks for the entire differential, also the, the motor, and I ended up doing the work. Had the thing ripped apart. Uh, it was actually an entire week that I had the, the Jeep the Jeep down because it, it did end up taking me a little bit longer. I was trying to get it done on a weekend. Um, it ended up taking me a little bit longer, and then I found out that um, the driver's side half shaft, as it inserted into the differential, it was it was just like all stripped not stripped but um it was all like uh chewed up it looked pretty gnarly um so that wasn't going to go into a newer diff that's supposed to be great and works good and functional so i had to source one of those unfortunately i had to go brand new i couldn't find a used one turns out to be 700 dollars plus 500 and ended up getting the the rear diff all buttoned up all put back together, life is good, take it for a drive, no more codes. No more error codes, things look great. Just kidding, I started getting some error codes. And so, I was like, what the heck? Then every, it was like every once, like maybe once a week, I would get one of those messages that popped up. Once a week, message would pop up, service, four wheel drive. And it seemed like if it were to come on, it would come on either right when you turn the Jeep on or halfway through wherever you're driving to. Um, that's what it seemed like, but it was only like once a week. Fast forward a little bit to the summertime. At this point, we're in, in the glorious days of COVID in 2020. Companies are, are throwing their, their stuff online for cheap. So I got myself an OBD2 scanner, picked up one of those and I was able to take a look at basically the same stuff that the dealer can. It's a more advanced scanner. It allows you to look at all of the computer systems in the, in the vehicle rather than just your check engine because the regular scanner is not going to tell you that stuff. Turns out that I'm getting like a, the electronic limited slip uh, throwing low voltage code or something. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll throw up on the screen what I'm talking about. Looking up what that is, there's a TSB for it, and that TSB states replace the motor on the differential and flash the four wheel drive system. So you gotta flash that. I was thinking to myself, well, I mean, technically the motor that's in there now is different than what I had in there. So can I just flash it? I mean, flashing, I, that's not something I personally can do. I'd have to take it somewhere, and that would cost a couple hundred bucks. I didn't do that yet. Now, go through the entire rest of the summer. Code didn't, didn't come on at all. I thought that the issue had just resolved itself overnight. Now it didn't. It didn't go off at all during the wintertime, but it just started doing it again maybe two months ago. I succumbed, I bought a new motor, $550. That's what, that's what this is down here. What I find interesting is that it says, do not drop. So it's really fragile. Why is it so fragile? If this thing is so fragile, then why put it on something that you're going to be thrashing up and down the hills um, off-roading? If it's so fragile, then put this label on the box that it's actually shipped in. This was the box that it was shipped in. There's no, there's no warning label on this at all. I'm hoping that this is fine because it was shipped with uh, with FedEx. I mean, this box itself looks fine. I'm sure it's packed really good.
Okay, so that's enough with that. Um, you're probably wondering what all of this uh, what all of this looks like. So I've got a pile of crap over here, and well, this is one of my old motor mounts. I threw the the first one away. Um, if you saw in my other motor mount video, um, I talked about um, how I replaced one of those prior to replacing the one that I did in the video. Um, this is just a, a pile of uh, just scrap crap that I'm probably going to end up um, making some kind of videos at a future date. But this this right here, that's that's a differential. And oh, transmission mount. That only took me like 10 minutes. I didn't even make a video for that one. Um, let's see. These are these are wheel bearings for a 2013 BRZ. Um, but that's the that's the differential. It's that thing's damn near 100 pounds. It's hard to it's hard to lift. Um, all right, going over here. Probably gonna trip on crap and die. I need to organize. Uh, these are brakes that came off of another Jeep, not mine, um, just a, a 3.6 uh, Laredo, I believe. Um, I mean, they're, they don't have, they're not vented, so they're not the, the, the HD brakes. Um, but this, this is the motor that, um, that was on it. And before I open the other one, look at this. I don't know if that's if I can focus on that, but it says if drop scrap. So yet again, another indication that this thing is fragile as as heck. And I mean, I, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so I had one heck of a time trying to get this thing off of my differential. Um, the thing, it just didn't want to come loose. Um, I had to angle grind. I had to angle grind these in order to get it off. And in order to get to, I was trying not to, to, to cut the, the connector off, but I did anyway. Um, but yeah, you could see I had to angle grind that off. Um, the bolts were just, I think these are the, the, the bottom ones. I'm not sure the orientation. Um, but those were just corroded all the way through and I ended up, um, using a, a pry bar, a sledge maybe, but, um, yeah, this, uh, this ended up coming apart. Let me see if I can open this up. So this is the basically the guts inside there is just the magnets for the motor it's a brushed motor brushes are right here and I don't know if you can hear that probably not but there's there's a little bit of a grinding feeling to it I'm blocking it sorry a little bit of a grinding feeling and Yeah, there's there's probably this motor may have been fine, but it also um, could have been um, could have been damaged uh, somehow. There are there's a bunch of electronics. I have no honestly, I have no idea why this thing is needs to be like handled with so much care. This is as far as I got to taking this thing apart. It was more just for curiosity's sake. Um, I do plan on taking apart the, um, the the differential just to see what really happened, but um, when I get time, I'll uh, I'll get to that. Um, I'm gonna need a couple more pieces of a uh, couple more tools because I don't believe I have the correct size to uh, to handle that. All right. Try not to die over here. 
because it needs needs a torx. It's a big torx. Measuring across, I, I think I remembered um, measuring 11 millimeters. All right, well, um, enough of that boring talk stuff. Let's get to work. Yesterday. So we're under here to try to figure out what size these uh, the hex the hex is six point. We'll just call it a what do you call it? Allen keys. We'll call it a six point. So we're under here to try to figure out what size those are. And I have a bunch of like Allen wrenches and stuff, but I don't I don't know what size this is. So I got to test it out so I can get the right um, uh, socket. I want to get a socket style so I can use a wrench. Test out what size these are oh my gosh that's already that's like loose oh wow all right I mean that was like not even hand tight are they all like that feels like it's on there oh no I just twisted that and I'm even using the the dinky the dinky slim side okay well this is a five millimeter so I'm gonna go grab a, a set of five mils or just a set you know that includes a five mil also the kind that has um, the little swivel ball at the tip so you can get it at it at it from an angle and um, get this going I don't presume I'm gonna need it, but it's never a bad idea to uh, spray a little bit of PB Blaster or just some type of penetrating fluid just to help loosen up the bolt so you're not working harder than you need to. So just spray a little bit. We're looking pretty good. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for, for a little while, then we'll get to it. All right, here we're looking at Home Depot. Need to figure out um, where we're at as far as where I can buy this. So this one is uh, that's SAE. That's not what we want. But we want millimeters. So it looks like this guy. And there's two right down the road. So this is what we're looking for. Just fits right on the socket. Gives you a long extension with a ball, ball tip, and that will allow you to get to it from an angle. And then, so, twenty-one dollars. It's, it's nice having. You know, it's a it's a little pricey, but still worth having because you never know when you're gonna need it. And three eighths. So three eighths that'll fit nicely. It's a good average size. So sweet. Oh, look at all that Ryobi. We got more here. Look at all of it. Okay, husky, 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 and you should be right here. Husky, yeah, that's it. That's it. Millimeter. There it is. That's the one.
please remove your card. Would you like an e-receipt? Thank you for shopping at the Home Depot. The next morning. So I just spent the past two minutes opening this. I opened the box. All for you guys to uh, not have me hit record. So, uh, turns out that there was no packing uh, bubble wrap or anything. It was just in a plastic bag. But, this is what we're looking at here. Now it says on the right, if drop scrap, do not open or modify. So they're they're pretty serious when they say, don't, you know, be really careful with this. And I, I still, I just still don't understand. Probably has a whole bunch of sensors, which would, which would probably be the reason why there's 10, is it 10 different connectors in there? all for just having this thing turn a motor. This right here, 500 something dollars. Yeah, thanks. And there's no generic for these. There's generics for the uh, the first gen WK2, 11 through 13. It uses a slightly different style and there are generics of those. A heck of a lot cheaper than it would be to buy OEM. And this is OEM. Got out my hex so it'll be easy for me to reach the uh, the motor from the underside and uh, let's get started so if you don't already know I do like Ryobi they're inexpensive tools and they really provide a good bang for the buck well these this light here you've probably seen it if you follow mighty car mods but they call it the bendy light this thing really is awesome it's bright it's awesome and it uses the, uh, the same 18 volt batteries that are in all of their tools. So I recommend it, buy it, you'll thank me later. Okay, so there's a little, uh, right here on the back side, there's a little tab that you gotta that you gotta um, kind of lift away. And then just a little wiggle. And then the whole thing slides off. Now, what is all that white stuff? Um, I was thinking that I was probably having some electrical issues, so I put dielectric grease. I don't know if it really worked or not, but I put it on just, just to try. So just kind of tuck that away and then we get to work. Now I'm going to try not to do this with my head directly underneath because who likes getting all kinds of dirt and stuff showered on their face? You know, I'm personally not a fan. Get this one in the back first. Wow. That came out so easy. Very easy. It's a little nerve-wracking actually to know just how easy that was to come out okay that's done i have a feeling that some diff oil is probably going to leak out a little bit Dusty. Okay, maybe not. So this is what we're what we're dealt. So this 
Feels like it turns just fine. Not really sure what would have caused the issue. If drop scrap. Definitely serious when they say that. Now there is a lot of what looks like it looks like uh, aluminum corrosion. But that's it. It's kind of hard to tell if it looks like there's anything bad on the inside. But I presume it's not. Just going to give that a little bit of clean, I think. Do the old finger test to make sure that there's nothing gritty. Feels fine. Alright, I'm going to work on getting the other one in. So, taking the, the new one, the O-ring, just took the new O-ring off. It looks like it has a little bit of grit. Careful of that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the oil that I can get from inside and lubricate this to make it nice and smooth so that it doesn't go and dry. Is that a za that that's what she said joke? Can't see this one. Okay, so it's like just snug, and I'm going to hand tighten that the rest of the way with a wrench. Actually, you know what? I can hand tighten it with this. Okay, that's not too tight. Okay. okay. Now, one thing that I want to do is see if I can clean some of this smeg with dielectric grease. Because look at that. I got all the excess off. I don't think I can do anything about what's gone inside the little plug terminal slots. Well, I guess at this point it's uh, plug in, see what we get. Service for the drive system. So, probably still needs to get flashed because that's what the TSB says. But, I mean, it's brand new. 
I should be able to just... Well... Yeah, probably need to flash it. I might have to think about this a little bit more and maybe do a follow-up or just add to the description. But, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to think about this for a little bit. All right. We have some codes. So this just completed. So the anti-lock break, implausible data received from transfer case, no subtype information. So no, um, no um, implausible data received from the transfer case. I have a feeling that's somehow kind of related. Not sure why it's coming up transfer case, but it is part of the four wheel drive. Electronic shifter module codes. Signal failure. Lost communication with TCM. I know for a fact that the adaptive cruise control, that, um, that code is thrown every time the, um, the warning light for the dash comes on for this issue. It's actually this one down here. But uh, this, this one at the bottom, rear differential motor circuit current out of range, that's the exact code that comes up. Um, that came up previously. So um, again, I feel like that's related um, or sorry, um, same code as before, except I probably do need to get this uh, flashed now. Just ignore the um, air um, the air suspension control module. Um, that's a previously stored code. I'm on custom air ride links for the um, quadra lift and um, basically I just modified the links to make the, the vehicle ride slightly uh, lower to the ground and leveled it out. So it, it's probably just grumpy that it's not uh, perfect. Um, okay, so I think I'm just going to clear all these. This action clears the codes, turns off the tech check engine light in your vehicle. It does not fix any problems. It cannot be undone. I'm just going to say clear it. Okay. Going to turn the Jeep off and see if we have any luck. Alright, so at this point it had already turned on. But it hasn't turned on yet. So, one of two things is probably going to happen. One of them, well, already didn't happen. Because it, it would either come on right when I turn the Jeep on, or it would come on probably, you know, after maybe like um, driving it five miles, um, ten miles. I've even had it come on hours after it's been running. So it's it's pretty inconsistent. It's either really consistent or inconsistent. So it's just inconsistent all the time. But the important thing to know is that when it comes on, then I lose um, adaptive cruise control, I lose um, the collision detection, I lose... Um, I think that's it, but that's some, some pretty important stuff. You know, if I'm driving for a while, that comes on, and I want to use cruise control, I can't. Or I might lose um, collision detection. That's pretty important. And that's a pretty big safety thing. So, looks like we might be okay. Maybe. I'll drive, uh, I'll drive around for a little while after I post the video 
and if it comes on then I'll just write in the description um, so make sure you check the description I'll keep that I'll keep that up to date if if this ends up uh, popping back up again so there you have it guys that's how it's done that's how you go about replacing the motor where is it right down there right there right 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 there for your electronic limited slip differential on your Jeep Garand Cherokee. Now I have the Overland. That motor also is on, it's also on the Limited with the Quadratrack 2 or Quadradrive, Quadradrive. It, it would be optional on that, but it comes, um, comes standard on the Overland. And it's also on the SRT and the Trackhawk, but I believe, I believe it's on those. If it's not or not on your year, then don't come after me, okay? Don't shoot the messenger. But um, that's how, that's how we get it done. Gotta, gotta stay hydrated. God, I love coffee. And I love iced coffee from Dunkin's, so. Thanks for tuning in guys. It's been fun. Make sure you uh, check out my Instagram. I am Big Stevo DIY. Also, wait a minute, that's backwards. Yep. Okay. So make sure you make sure you follow me on Instagram. Um, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe so that you don't miss anything. Um, any DIY cool stuff. Um, I've got more stuff planned. Um, this was only just one, one part to the rest of, uh, the nice weather, uh, summer days. Um, I'm currently working on, um, another project right now, which is reinforcing my, um, my son's swing set. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm I do all different kinds of stuff. So make sure that you, uh, you tune in, um, check on that, and um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks.